If you are into bushcraft or just into outdoor knives in general, then there's little doubt that you have already become familiar with the Victorinox Venture. Well, I have the Victorinox Venture. I've had it for three months now, and I think you may want to watch this before you purchase one for yourself. All right, before we get started, there's just a few things I want to talk about. First off, I purchased this knife. It was not sent to me for testing or review, so it is mine. I bought it with my own money. And uh, I didn't know if I was going to buy it or not. Uh, but a number of viewers asked me to review it. And the reason I say I wasn't so sure I wanted to buy it is, in looking at it, I could see some really good features, but I also saw some things that concerned me. But I could not pass judgment on it, of course, unless I had it for myself. So I bought it. And I'm glad I did, don't get me wrong, I'm glad I did, but I'm also glad that I'm making this video for you now. So just as a backstory, I'm sure everybody who's into bushcraft is familiar with Felix Immler. Felix is an outstanding bushcrafter, supremely uh, knowledgeable in his use of woods and crafting woods and making things. And for a number of years, he's been a representative for Victorinox knives. And I don't think anybody can touch Felix and what he can do with the Victorinox knives. Well, not so many months ago, Felix introduced the Victorinox Venture, a bushcraft knife from the classic Victorinox line of knives. And uh, people jumped on it. And I could see why. It was presented in a way that made it look like the best knife for bushcraft to come out in any number of years. But is it? Really? Is it really? So here's what I have done. I purchased the knife for myself and I bought it with, find it, my, the sheath is in my pocket here. I just bought it with the plain sheath. I did not buy with the multi-mount sheath or the package that wraps around it and gives you all the other options. I just wanted to test the knife because this was not going to be a test of all the accessories and pieces that you can add onto this sheath and the knife itself. Just the knife. That's all I wanted to test out. Having said that, I will be passing comments on the basic sheath. So again, Please, this is not a bashing of either the knife or of Felix Immler or his skills or uh, of Victorinox in general. We all know that they produce high quality knives. Oh, by the way, did you know this is not Victorinox's first bushcraft knife? There's one that's been out for a number of years, the Master MIC-L, and it retails, at least in Canada, for almost $400. I, that's probably why you don't hear a lot about it because it's a little bit on the high end. This is definitely, I wouldn't call it a budget knife, but it is in the affordable range if it lives up to its billing. Okay, so what are we going to do? We're going to take a closer look at the knife. I'm going to go over all of its specifications, all of its design features. I will be looking at the sheath. Actually, I'm going to get the sheath done first. Of course, I'm going to be doing some demonstrations on it. I'm going to give you my thoughts, both the pro and the con on this knife. All right, let's get started. All right, let's get started. I do have a cheat sheet full of notes here as far as the specifications go and I will be putting all of this information in the video description for your reference in case you are interested. I did say I wanted to look at the sheath first so let's do that. So I'll take the knife out, I'll put that down here. So when the sheath arrived it uh, came as a two-piece affair. It wasn't assembled as it is now. You have to assemble it yourself but you know that that is so so easy to do. Um, a couple of things about the sheath. Yeah, how do I say this delicately? It sucks. I think that's the only way I can say it. Let me point out why. It's not the quality of materials. The material quality in the construction is outstanding, as I would expect from Victorinox. It's just a very poor design for a number of features. So let's just get the stats out of the way to start with. It's made of thermoplastic glass to polymers plastic okay tpe plastic 1.2 ounces 35 grams so it's a super lightweight sheath what do i uh, like about it well i like the quality of the sheath and one little hack that we've probably all seen felix and maybe other people do as well is that you can use the sheath as a bellows you take the belt strap off and you can blow through this end of it and uh you you know use it as a bellows for your fire okay nice little hack there's no question about it but uh, nothing else about the sheath is worthy of the Victorinox name on it. And I'm being very blunt about it, and here are my reasons why. So the knife retention on the sheath, when I got it, 
it was really, really bad. I could shake it upside down and it would follow easily. It also rattled a lot in the sheath. Now, I'm not the first person to have uh, observed this and tried to come up with some recipe for fixing it. And I watched a number of videos and I settled on the one from Felix Zimler. It was the most well thought of thought out easiest process for making the sheath better as far as retention goes and if you haven't seen it all Felix does is takes a pan of hot water not necessarily boiling just good hot water dips the sheath and holds it in the hot water without the strap on it by the way takes it out and puts it in a vise and squeezes it slightly and I do mean slightly it doesn't take very much to squeeze end to end here and what that will do it was will pick up or tighten up on the grip for retention and it did do that in fact you before it was so loose you couldn't really hear it snap now it snaps okay so the retention is better than it was when it came um, from the factory the next thing is the belt loop um, quality materials without question just well that right there look how flexible it is it is just way too flexible and if you add the multi-mount you're not doing a whole lot to improve the sheath because you're still using the basic foundation of this sheath added to the multi-mount on it so uh, yeah so the retention uh, here, here's my issue with the sheath I could get I guess I could get used to the retention on this because it does make it easy to pull out of the sheath. But here, when it's on my belt, there is a retention loop that you pull down over it. And it works. A couple thoughts here. I'm not sure how long this will last. I, I, you know, I've only had it a couple of months now. I've pulled it off, pulled it on. You know, it's been working. But I find, one, that it's awkward because every time I want to take the knife out of my sheath, I have to reach down and fiddle with this. Getting it off is not as hard as getting it back on. Now, it looks easy because it's not on my belt. But it is a little bit of a nuisance trying to get this loop on and off. And to be honest, I was just assumed that I didn't, like, I don't mind the extra retention and the extra safety it provides especially when I'm hiking but when I'm just doing tasks around the camp or I'm, or I'm uh, just doing a little bit of carving I, I don't like that it dangles like this so freely so okay so there have been a number of hacks if you will to improve the sheath and they're all worth trying if you buy one of these knives but here's my point you shouldn't have to you shouldn't have to do all kinds of things to make your sheath usable or functional. It should be fully functional right from the start. And I, I just feel that this sheath is not. It's not worthy of the Victorinox name that we've all come to know and love. In the long term, I'm probably going to change this sheath out for something else. But in the short term, I wanted you to see it so I could mention my comments. Right, again, just before we move on to the knife itself, there's one more thing I want to show you about the sheath. And this is also something that I see as a bit of a con. This is not a design fault so much as it is a personal preference. It's how low this hangs. This is where the belt will take it and hang on belt. Maybe people may like it just there. And that's fine if you that's where you like it to hang. Personally, I like danglers for a couple of reasons. One, it's easier for me with my old shoulders to get them out of the sheath. Number two, they ride below the pack or the belt on my backpack, being one of the thicker padded belts. Now, Felix and other people have come up with hacks for making this a better drop using everything from carabiners to uh, multi carabiners, different things. I tried a few different hacks for it. By the way, whatever hack you're going to use, please do not clip it to your belt loop. You want this attached to your belt because Murphy's Law says the belt loop is going to rip when you fall and you're going to lose your knife so put it on your belt not on your belt loop and so here was my hack I'd use this on another knife uh, one of the haltifors that I reviewed and it works it works just fine I made a loop of paracord now it's it's got a, an adjustable paracord loop on it but all I had to do with this is slide it through the belt loop like that and I've got two loops and my fingers representing the belt this now runs down my belt. Now this is 550 paracord, so it's, it's plenty strong for doing this. This now dangles below my belt and it's adjustable to whatever I need it to be for the, the thickness or the width of the belt or the, how low I'd like it to dangle. Dangles quite freely and uh, much easier to get at. Again, it's just one of those things I wish I didn't have to do. 
but this is simple and it works. All right, enough about the sheath. Let's take a look at the knife. Starting with the specifications for this knife, total length, 9.05 inches tip to pommel or 230 millimeters blade length 4.3 inches 110 millimeters blade thickness 5 millimeters 0.14 inches and if that's not a misprint if it is I, I'll correct it on the screen right now blade height 0.84 of an inch or 21.4 millimeters weight of the knife is 4.13 ounces or 117 grams the steel used in the knife is 14 c 28 n stainless steel uh, hardened to a rock wall of 59 and even says that right on the blade which is unusual so all that information is right there as well all right so those are the basic specifications let's get into the design now, as far as the design goes, it is a drop point design, almost a spear point, and very much center line for the knife itself. That's something we all like to have as bushcrafters for a variety of reasons, but the one most often quoted is for drilling, so that you can drill into a piece of wood and it, the tip it will provide the center point for that. So that is there. That's, that's, that's a good feature. There's nothing wrong with that. The blade is full flat ground right down. There is a secondary bevel, small secondary bevel on it, but it is full flat ground. People have mixed opinion if that belongs on a bushcraft knife. I'll talk more about that in a minute. It is a full tang construction, but it's not a full broad tang. The tang is hidden, but it, the pommel is exposed on this as well. Hard plastic over mold handle on it also of TPE and I'll just give you some close-ups on it because there's a few things about this that I like and one or two that I'm not so fancy about so there is it's a kind of a jimping that's molded into the handle here and down here those are nice they 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 provide a little bit of extra purchase and grip on the knife and so does the general texturing of the knife or the handle itself if you get in really really close and I don't, it won't show up on camera, but all the little texturing is all the Victorinox shield with cross in it. Boy, that, that was impressive. <laughs> I had to look really close to see that, but it is there. The sheath does have thumb scallops on either side of the blade. We'll talk more about those in a minute, how they're used and whether or not they're functional on this knife. A couple of other features at the pommel. And one is, and this is something that uh, Felix was very insisted on, is that this rounded uh, pommel be sharp at the edges and it is very sharp and does it scrape yes it does it'll scrape very well and it has the hex here so for the right type of uh, bit for for drilling into wood you can use this as a hex and it's also a lanyard hole i guess it's functional it's a nice extra i'm not saying it won't say it doesn't belong on the knife but it's not what i would buy uh, buy this knife for that little hex thing i guess i, I can accept it because it doesn't cost any extra it's there i may or may not use it but there it is. Okay, I said I wanted to get back to, oh, there's one more piece, and that's the jimping way up here on the front. Um, that's unusual on a knife. I've seen it on hunting knives. You don't often see it on bushcraft knives, and it has a function. You can grip way forward with your finger here, and you've got some, some uh, uh, traction there for working. Like on a hunting knife, it would be for skinning if it was up there. Or it can be useful if you're using the knife off of your thumb like a lever cut, which is a very uh, good technique to use when carving. I'll probably do a bit of that in a moment in showing it. And uh, yes, there is another feature I guess I should mention. It has a beautiful 90 degree spine on it. As you'll see, it will scrape everything that you put the edge to. So great design overall on the blade. Overall, pretty good design on the handle. It's not especially thick, but it is contoured in that classic shape. So overall, very nice. A couple of comments there. I have XL hands, so yes, it's too small. It's okay, it's almost too small. <laughs> my hand just wraps around it. Well, no, sorry, it over wraps it out quite a bit. My finger's way up on my palm. So I do find the handle a little bit small. I expect most people with medium to large hands will do just fine with this. Still functional for me. I just like handles that are a little bit bigger than that. So this is intended for people with the XL hands or double XL hands. You may want to take a pass on this knife or grab somebody else's and hold it in your hand before you pull the trigger on purchasing it. So here is a bit of a con on the design of the pommel. I'm all for the exposed pommel and it's on other knives and it works just well. 
They can be uncomfortable if you're palming the knife for drilling, you know, just for a couple of strokes, or it's not bad. And here is where it gets really uncomfortable. I'm not quite sure, can you, I'm hoping that's showing up there, that edge right there. Now, it's there to give as much circumference of that curve as possible for the scraping, as Felix Emler demonstrates scraping a spoon bowl out. Yeah, what a great idea, right? That's what, that's the genius of Felix, is the things that he can come up with, with what looks like uh, something very common in everyday. But here is something that Felix talks about which I agree with as a good feature on a knife and that is the thumb scallops. These thumb scallops allow you to place a thumb here if you're carving maybe in reverse for spoon carving. It's a great comfortable feature and if you put it in reverse grip the thumb scallop provides also comfort and control on the knife when legs chest lever cuts. I like that. I agree, Felix. It's a great idea. It's the problem is again right there at the tip. And that's the reason I showed it to you because when it is in my hand, ready for that reverse cut, got to see if I can put it. Can you see where the tip is? That point is right there. And uh, I was doing some practice with it, doing some chest lever cuts. And after two or three strokes, I said, what's going on here? I can't understand why there's a sharp pain in my hand. All right, I don't want to overemphasize this or overdramatize this. It wasn't like it was truly uncomfortable, but that was poking in and leaving a mark in my hand here, which after a while got to be uncomfortable. Unnecessarily so. I think that's the best way to say it. unnecessarily so. I will tell you now that once the video is finished, I am going to round off that tip there. I am losing some of the curvature here. That's true. But that is just plain uncomfortable. And I don't think it's just people with XL hands. I think people with large hands are also going to find that uncomfortable after a little bit of use. Okay. Very lightweight knife. Very... Oh, I guess the way to say it, and you'll see this in the demonstrations, is this is a beautiful knife for carving with, and that's where it excels for me. It is so slicey for doing feather sticks, and you can probably guess how good it is at food prep as well, because I have used it. I used it around the house more than I did out here, but that's, that's typical of my home testing is, will this knife work in the kitchen? Oh yeah, this works as a great knife in the kitchen. But is it a good wood processing knife? And does that, uh, was, uh, does that mean it's a good bushcraft knife? Well, let's do a few demonstrations and then we'll talk about it. To be clear, I have no intention of abusing this knife just to see how far I can push it. I watched a video and the person treated this as some type of a survival knife and did amazing, well, just, okay, in my mind, outrageous things with the knife, and yeah, it broke. Well, expect it, knowing what he was doing with it. I'm not sure where the impression came from that this is a survival knife. It may be the way it gets packaged with the multi-mount sheath and the wraparound pouch sheath that goes with it, which would suggest, seem to suggest that it is a survival knife. It is not a survival knife. At best, it is a bushcraft knife, and we're going to see if it really lives up to that task as well. So please don't think this is an indestructible knife. It is far from it. Uh, and I do have two other knives I'm going to compare it with here in a few moments time just to show you what I'm talking about. All right, let's get on with the test. Batoning. I know people are going to right away cringe at using this knife for batoning a piece of wood. Honestly, it would not be my first choice for batoning a piece of wood. But if it's going to be carried as a bushcraft knife, then there is some wood splitting that's going to be involved somewhere along the way. Unless, of course, you're carrying a much larger knife or a hatchet or an axe to do your splitting for you. Very legitimate, but a lot of people like to use their knives for batoning. So, and I think it's a reasonable task for a bushcraft knife provide it you stay within its limitations of what it's capable of doing. So here's what I'm going to be batoning and honestly I'm a little nervous this may be even too big. This is a piece of red maple that is seasoned but still in its prime. It is nice and dry, hard, uh, what are we looking at here, just over 12 maybe 13 inches in length and I'm going to say two, two and a quarter inches in diameter. Nice straight grain. Hopefully I can get a few pieces out of this that are good for feather sticking. Uh, here's my experiences so far. I say I'm a little nervous because I've batoned other sticks of this size. And well, let's just get started and see where this goes. And you'll, you'll understand what I'm talking about. So there's my baton. Make sure I'm staying in frame for this. Good. That's a good spot.
All right, so there was no issue with baton in that. Well, that's a beautiful piece of wood. Yeah, it's dry. It just has that slight, slight damp feeling, but to the lips, I can feel it's nice and dry. Um, the last time I did a piece of wood about this diameter, I got stuck in it. And it's not until afterwards that I realized there was a knot in it that I was working my way through. No knots in this, and that's, of course, the reason why it went through so well. I'll tell you now, though, it doesn't baton as well as the other knives that I'm going to show you. And if you, well, let's just bring them into the picture so that you can see what I'll be talking about by comparison. Here's the one that I think I'll, I'll bring out right now. Yes, the Mora Garberg. Why the Mora Garberg? Well, let's just wait and I'll talk about why I'm showing you the Mora Garberg in the same video with the Victoria Knox Venture. So put the Mora sign. The Mora will split wood all day long. This one will split wood, but it well as you split down through the wood the wood you can actually feel a little bit of warmth on the blade the wood is grabbing the blade as it go down goes down through the scandy grind on the moor is like a wedge it just splits it open much much easier still capable of it that's that's what i want to say but once again you probably don't want to go any thicker than i did with this all right so what i'm going to do off camera i'm just going to take these down into quarters maybe even eighths so we can go on to a, for another demonstration all right for the remainder of this video I'm, I'm going to continue to do the same tests i do with any other knife that i would be reviewing and uh, all of the tests represent some aspect of what you would do with a bushcraft knife or what you would expect a bushcraft knife to be able to do. So this one is gonna become a 10 peg for us. And in this, there is a couple of skills involved. One is notching a simple L or seven notch intended for the guy line. And of course, we'll be pointing a point on the other end. So for this, I do a little bit of cross cutting and that's what's representative here is, so I go, about one third of the way into the stick to create a stop cut and then thumb push into that stop cut with the knife to clear it out and just that easy we have a, a stop notch for our guy line for the 10 peg but again also representation of the cross cutting or cross grain batoning and making a notch which could be used for other things like traps and that type of thing so now of course the next thing is to put a tip on this the reason i like this technique in this demonstration is because it does it in a couple of things it shows how well the knife slices through a piece of wood but it also shows how comfortable it is to hold in the reverse grip while doing the chest lever cut or the scissor cut another name for it so all i'm going to do is just make a series of slices until i get to a point down here and uh, then we'll be ready to go forward so i just and the knife is slicey and that is hard wood all right a couple in the other direction All right, there's a point that I can use for driving in a temp peg, but I want to show you. Is that showing up? Can you see the dent in my hand from this? If I had to do much more than that, I think I'd actually probably get a little blood blister right there. And that's in fact what I wanted to show. Okay, the next demonstration is feather sticking. So I just looked through the splits I have, and this is the one I chose for doing the feather sticking. Beautiful straight grain, no apparent knots, pin knots. Sometimes they can show up when you start carving, but it does. I don't think there's going to be anything in this, so this should make good feather sticking material for sure. And uh, yeah, well, okay, we'll just give it a try. Now, I'm going to do this starting out with the Victorinox Venture, but I'm going to bring the Garberg back into the picture just as a bit of a comparison on both. So let's just see what I can gather. I think I need to turn the camera down just a bit. And see what I can do. Oh my goodness. Yeah, this is such a slicing knife. I don't want to dig too deep into the wood, so I'm just letting the knife glide along the surface of the wood at its lowest angle. And with its lowest angle, I can get the thinnest curls. Let me just bring that down a little bit more. I'm 
just rotating the stick each time I run the knife down just to find a new fresh little apex edge. And this is with no effort whatsoever. Now these are fine curls. I can make bigger ones, but I just the the challenge sometimes is just how fine can you make them? Look how fine those are, right? Absolutely amazing how fine I can get it. And I'm going to lay that knife down, bring in the Mora Garberg, because the Garberg is also a good feather sticking. Not my favorite, but it's still a good feather sticker. And I'm going to work on the same stick from the other direction. Right away, I have to adjust my angle of the knife to get it to bite. But once it does, it really wants to stay bite in. And what's interesting is, hopefully that's showing up, it's making good curls, but look at the difference in size of the curls, right? Much larger curls than this. Now, I can make bigger curls with the Victorian S Venture. The challenge is, is how small can I make them with the Garberg? And if I work towards the tip, I should be able to make some little ones. Yeah, I can. I can make the little ones with the Garberg, just not as easily as I could with the Venture, right? Okay, so those are most of the basic skills. The last one I want to demonstrate is scraping. Okay, so this is ever so slightly embarrassing. Um, my primary ferrocerium rod that I normally put on my belt and put in my pocket is not here. Um, I left it home and sitting with all the things that I normally grab when I go out into the woods, I just failed to bring it today. I do have one, of course, because I have my one of my smaller fire kits and there's always at least one ferrocerium rod in that. Usually there's two to three on me. So I'm going to be working with one I don't normally work with. It's one of those less expensive ones, but I think it'll work. The other thing I forgot that I usually bring out for knife tests is a piece of fat wood. So what I'm going to do is just work with that same piece of maple, the one I just used for feather sticking, just put the well there they are the curls I just cut the curls off the end of it because I want to show that you can use a piece of uh, wood instead of fat wood doesn't have quite the same properties but it will give you the fuzz that you need to catch a spark and this knife is nothing short of amazing yes it has look at that If you're not great at making feather sticks, but you're looking for some really fine stuff to catch a spark, that's all you need to use really is the back of your knife. If it's got a spine like this one does, and then the, the ferrocerium rod will catch those sparks. Now it's a small rod. Come on, you guys can catch. They're caught. There we go. A little shy to catch on. Here we go. All right, there's the point. This is definitely a champ at throwing sparks for sure and scraping as you can see. All right, those are the demonstrations I wanted to give you for the Victorinox Venture. And I did say I brought out two knives to show you. And the first one I've already brought into the picture and that of course is the Mora Garberg. Now there's a few reasons why I'm showing you the Mora Garberg uh, alongside the Victorinox Venture. First off, let me say, I'm not trying to say that they are equal in any way. They have different designs and I think slightly different use and for them, but there are features of both, both of these knives that I think are worth considering. First off, they're both made of the same steel, 14C, 28N, stainless steel, reasonable, just above, I'm going to call it the mid-level stainless steel. You can certainly do much better, but of course you're going to pay for it. So that's what they have in common. They are both full tang knives that have extended pommels. And just as a, a, a thought here, that's also very sharp. I was just practicing scraping with this. It's not quite as half circumferential, hmm, or a curve, if you will, as the one on the Victorinox, but it is still a curve that you can use for scraping if you feel that it's something that you want to do. My notes are starting to get blown away by the wind here. So it has that. They both have the hidden tang with that extended pommel, as I mentioned. They both have great 90 degree angles on them, um, and they both have the plastic uh, grips on them. And that's where I'm going to say the comparison between the two of them ends. By the way, this knife is very comfortable 
in all grips all the way around. That's one thing I'll say about the Garberg. You've probably heard me say in other videos talking about more knives. It's not my favorite bushcraft knife. That is in no way intended to be any kind of disrespect to this knife. I'm very, very impressed with what it can do. My thoughts is it starts to cross over from bushcraft into survival, capable of both, but maybe not ideal for either. It's good at bushcraft, but there are better knives. And there are better knives for survival. I guess there's different ways of looking at that. All those things considered, it's still a comfortable knife for use in bushcraft tasks. It's just not as fine a carver as, we'll say, well, the Venture. The Venture has a much better blade for almost every task except one, and that's obvious. Look at the thickness of the spines. The uh, Garberg is a little bit thicker, not by, actually, they may be exactly the same. I'll put it on the, on the screen if it's any different, but there's a lot more metal in the blade of the Garberg because it is of the Scandinavian grime as opposed to the full flat grind. And you can feel that in the weight of these two knives. This is a much heavier knife. So I'd put that out there for a reason. And the reason being is what you are expecting of your knife, what it is you want your knife to do for you when you take it out into the woods. If you want it to be a fine carver, a food prep knife, a true bushcraft knife, which is mostly working at wood, but not necessarily heavy wood processing, then the Venture definitely is a good knife for that. But if you're looking for something a little bit more heavy duty that you can split wood with without any uh, fear, if you will, or of any concern about it breaking, then you're looking at the Garberg. I have not had this in a situation where I thought I was going to break it. There was a few situations where I looked at it and wondered if it was going to bend, but it, it didn't do that either. But at the same time, the same situation, I would have no fear wailing on this, and I don't mean abusively, but using all the um, pounding that the baton would give it to get it through the piece of wood I chose for it. So I just want to put that out there so that you're comparing it. Now here's the last thing I want to do in comparing these knives. These are prices here in Canada, so they're relative to us only, but they should be comparable in terms of where else you can purchase it. I paid $95 Canadian for this. I thought that was a fairly reasonable price. I definitely paid more for the Garberg, but I also came with the Melty Mount. When I looked at it recently in its just most basic form with the sheaf that I showed you in a moment that came with it, um, $105. $10 is not a significant difference in price between these two knives. I won't call this a budget knife, but I won't call this outrageously expensive anymore because uh, there are knives that cost a lot more. By the way, I just want to show you something about the sheaf. This is the Mora Garberg sheep that we all know. Um, one of my viewers, Joshua, commented on this, and it was one of those duh moments. This can be used as a vellos just as easily, probably more easily, than the one that comes with the Venture. You can blow right down there and use your sheath the bellow. And that is also true, of course, for the cans ball. There's the cans ball that I reviewed recently as well. Now, let's bring the cans ball into the picture. This may be a more close... Uh, Comparison between the two, there are differences. This is not made of the same steel. It's 12C27, I believe it is. I'm going to annotate it if I'm wrong. 12C27 uh, stainless steel. Still a good steel, if not quite the same as the 14C28N. And uh, it's not full tang. It tangs about three-quarter tang, so it doesn't have a protruding tang on it. It is very lightweight, and it's a little bit thinner. Uh, it is scanty ground all the way, but it is thinned out for about half of the blade. I've reviewed this and said, this is a really nice slicey knife that can still do all the carving that you want from your bushcraft knife. Makes it great for food prep, makes it good for anything. You need a real slicey knife, meaning it will glide through wood without, with very little resistance. It's almost right on par with the Victorinox Venture. I'm gonna say the Victorinox Venture is a little bit heavier. It is, by the way, it's a, it's a tiny bit thicker through in the steel and a little bit more weight behind it as a result. Um, they're both in the same category of being slicey knives for bushcraft. They're not Scandinavian ground. Well, that is, but it's not what most people would think of as a Scandinavian ground knife. Okay, I've gone back and forth. It would seem I've gone back and forth on this knife. So let's just wrap this up with a few pros and cons. What do I really like about it? 
the blade shape, without question. I am really a fan of full flat grind knives, and this is a well done one. A continuous curve all the way up, and that's part of what you like about carving. Fine enough at the tip, and with that jimping there, it makes it a great carving knife. Felix knows exactly what he's doing when he's designing the knife for carving, because that's one of the things uh, Felix does best. Great 90 degree spine, as you saw. This will scrape better than probably almost any knife in my collection. I like the plastic handle. I like the shape of it. I like the way it feels in my hand, mostly, except for the fact that it does feel a little bit small. I like the fact that there's a protruding pommel on it, but I don't like how sharp it is right there. And the big thing that I really don't like about this knife is gotta be that sheath. I'd pay an extra 10, $20 for a better sheath. Question, or the, the point is, you shouldn't have to, right? You should get a sheath that's more than functional. This, to me, is just barely functional. You can make it functional by doing the hacks that are out there on the videos, including Felix's videos, but it doesn't make it a good sheath. It should come as better sheath right from the start. Okay, that's all my thoughts on it. I just wanted to put this out there. I did not want it to come across as a bashing video on the Victorinox Venture. I quite like it. It's, it's, a, it's a real monster in the kitchen. It really does a great job of carving food and the like. And you saw how fine I can carve with it on wood. That's where it really, really does excel. <sighs> All right, if you have any comments or any questions, please put them in the comments section below. As mentioned earlier, I'll put all the specifications as well as the links to where I purchased my Victoria Knox Venture in the video description. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.